And then, with full force, Percy lifted Pierre from the stormy lake, dragging him onto the dock. The excess weight of Pierre's wet clothes dragged him into the ground, and he fell to his knees, coughing up excess water. Rain poured onto them unforgivingly as the storm raged on. You saved me, Pierre said through struggled breaths. Water was dripping down his face. His hair was matted wet, but something behind his deep brown eyes glittered. Percy gritted his teeth. Why didn't you, like, listen to Paulette when she tried to stop you, dude? You shouldn't even have been on the dock in this, like, gnarly weather. You could have, like, gotten hurt. Pierre looked away and clenched his fist. His expression was a mixture of hurt and something else that Percy couldn't put his finger on. I couldn't just sit around. I had to do something. You... Pierre's voice trailed off. He slowly relaxed his hand, opening it and revealing a single puka shell. You were so sad when your favorite necklace broke. I knew the missing puka shell fell into the lake, so I had to find it, no matter what, Pierre said. Percy clasped Pierre's hands into his and shook his head. Thanks, dude. But I'm, like, just happy you're safe. You're, like, way more important to me than my necklace, because... He said, his voice trailing off but filled with affection. Percy's eyes glistened. Pierre. Wait! I want the last scene of this fan fiction to be perfect. Lapis, read the closing line in your Percy voice. What? No way. Please! Please, please, please! Oh, stop that. All right. You're like my favorite friend, Pierre. Oh! Wow, that was incredible! And dare I say, the inclusion of audible dialogue made the ending even stronger than it already was. You really think so? Definitely. It was so authentic. I've also compiled a thorough collection of information that provides why this fan fiction was far superior than the rest. Observe, Lapis. Unlike many other of its kind, this fanfiction was satisfying both emotionally and in terms of human camaraderie. Our favorite characters entered establishing partnerships, which we frequently crave due to the teasing and ambiguous nature of the show, fulfilling our strongest desires. And not only did everyone act completely in character, but the story was reminiscent of an actual Camp Pining Hearts episode, which caused us to feel even more attached to the plot. Yeah, that's true. You know, you made a good point about the fanfiction resembling an actual episode of the show. What if it became an actual episode? <laughs> Just kidding. Yes! That's a brilliant idea! Let's make this a reality! How do we accomplish this? What if I contact Percy, Pierre, and Paulette right now and demand that they make this episode? Don't you think they'd be too busy to make an episode for us? Ah, you're right. They bear the burden of their fame. How about we make a fan episode? Interesting. Elaborate. Like we can make it a cartoon, similar to the one Steven watches every Saturday morning. Yes. Do we know how to make one of those? No, but maybe we can hire someone to make it for us? Yes. We'll meet more suffice as valid Earth currency? Oh, um, no. Ugh. Hmm. Meet Morps! You're a genius, Lapis! We have the entire universe at our fingertips. Ha! I spit on the concepts of officiality and currency in cartoons. Who needs it when I can? You sock puppets! We can use stuffed animals. We can use found objects. Okay, wait. I've got a good idea. For real. Let's put on a play. <laughs> Good one, Peridot. Hey, hey, I'm serious about this one. Oh, right. I mean, I guess it's a pretty good idea, but don't you think it'd be a lot of work? It sounds hard. If you're really serious about doing this, we can't just take someone else's work and make it our own. Hmm, you propose a good point, Lapis. However, I propose one even better. We ask the writer for permission to make a play out of their fanfiction. 
Yes, yes, I know what you must be thinking. Oh, great Peridot, how will you find the identity of this internet human writer? Correct? Right. Ta-da! You see, Lapis? I've created an app that will identify and find any human on Earth. I just simply input all the desired criteria and... Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> Greetings, Donut Butler. Are you the author of the hit Camp Pining Hearts fanfiction that is called Camper's Pining Hearts or a Story of Friendship and Love? <laughs> what are you talking about? Fanfiction? Yeah, right. I mean, no, never. Our very thorough, incredibly scientific calculations led us to believe that you are the username XX54D4ND10NE1YXX, author of over 30 Camp Pining Hearts fanfictions, none of which are popular, except for the most recent and longest running chapter fanfiction entitled Camper's Pining Hearts or a Story of Friendship and Love, which has been recently becoming viral within the community. I said no! That's definitively, definitively not me! Perhaps you require an excerpt to jog your memory. Ahem! <clears throat> Chapter 1. Camp Beginnings. Percy dropped his bag in the doorway of his cabin. He took a deep breath, soaking in the scent of summer. Stop! Alright, fine. Is me okay? Can you be quiet about- especially in front of our... customers? I- I... we... we're huge fans! Lapis and I read the entirety of Camper's Pining Hearts are a story of love and friendship in one sitting. Two sittings if you include that one time I dropped my tablet and had to stop and pick it up. Shh, not so loud, but keep going. It's true. It was the best one we read. And we have pursued quite a large number of less than satisfying fanfictions. Well, you know me, a, a natural born writer. Not many people have the talent, but I- I stayed up all night tirelessly editing his work. I'm glad you enjoyed the story. He was nervous about every chapter he published. I wasn't. Anyway, Lapis and I are here on business. Will you or will you not allow us to perform a play based on your story? I suppose since it's pretty much impossible to find talent as raw as this, who am I to deny the world of such fine art? He's okay with it. Hey! Alright, here's the deal. I'll let you do a play about my fict if you let me serve all its progress as an in-house critic type of thing. And don't attach my name to the project. I gotta keep my image. You got that? Can't let the cool kids know. Affirmative, Donut Butler. What do we do now that we have Lars's permission? Do any of you know how to put on a play? I have some ideas. First, I think we should definitely get permission from Mayor Dewey. After that, we need to hire a cast and crew. Next would be making props for the play. And then, finally, rehearsals. <laughs> Excellent job, Donut Master. I believe that all sounds most feasible. Might be easier said than done. I may require your assistance with this performance, Donut Master. We'll fare better with a knowledgeable human collaborator. Sure, I love to help. I'll come with you. Hey, don't leave me here alone. I'm helping too. Um, I I don't know, kids. It, it seems like it'd be a lot of work is all. That's true. Come on. I've accomplished way more complicated missions before. Um, well, there's also the issue of funds. That's true. Mayor Dewey, sir. What if we only ask for volunteers, and for everything else, we'll raise our own money. You won't need to fund us at all. <sighs> sir, with all due respect, sir, I think putting on a play would not only be fun, but extremely beneficial for our small town. Because of Camp Pining Heart's increased popularity, putting on a play based on it would draw out the townspeople, who are both interested in this series or just looking for something fun and different to entertain themselves. It would attract tourists as well. You wouldn't spend any money on us, but we'd make you money. Oh my! Well said, young lady. Alright, I'll give you one week to get everything together. 
Let us commence our first order of business, cast and crew. Since we're the masterminds behind this endeavor, we get dibs on parts we'll be playing. I, for one, will be the director. I've got big dreams for this play, and I wish to command everybody to do my bidding. <laughs> I already mentioned it before, but I just want to be the in-house critic. Don't credit me. I'd be perfectly happy as a background character. I'm... I'm not sure if there's really a character that fits me. That's the most inaccurate statement I've heard all day, Lapis. You should definitely play the role of Percy. I've heard you recite Percy's lines flawlessly when watching the show. Additionally, your Percy voice is so exceptional, I can't tell you two apart sometimes. Yeah, but Percy's supposed to be the cool one. Correct. That's why the part's perfect for you. Yeah, that part's perfect for you, Lapis. You're by far the coolest one here. Hey. Well, I guess I'll try it. Yes. Next, let's cast Pierre. As Pierre is the most handsome by human standards, we must find an individual whose looks are comparable. Excuse me? I repeat myself, I only want to be the in-house critic, so I have Klein your offer to be the incredible handsome Pierre. What about Steven? Hmm, I have to admit, he's the most handsome human I've met. Hey! I vote for Steven. Thank you. Hmm? Yeah! So, um, good morning, Peridot. What are you doing here? I'm glad you asked, Steven. I have a task of utmost importance that I must assign to you. As you know, I'm a big, nay, colossal fan of the human television franchise Camp Pining Hearts. That being said, Lapis and I are currently putting together a play based on our favorite fan-created story, which, by the way, may as well be canon, but I digress. Time allotted, one week until performance. Current mission, casting call and auditions. My question to you is... Will you play the role of Pierre in our play? <gasps> yes! Ah! Thank you, Peridot! I secured Steven for the role of Pierre, and I am ready to proceed with the auditions. Okay. Yo, like, what's going on here? Peridot and Lapis are putting on a play based on Camp Pining Hearts fanfic written by... Ahem, the Joby Ham. Oh, this is about the show that Steven loves? <laughs> Let's all audition. Well, if it's for Steven, I suppose we could do that. Wow, that was so beautiful. Why, thank you. Out of the way, nerds. Let me show you how a real audition is done. Whoa! You rolled exactly like Percy's plick cell before it dropped into the lake. Just like the fanfic. Interesting. I may or may not be inclined to agree. But perhaps you have more talent than I thought. Congratulations, Amethyst. You got the part of Percy's Puka Shell. Um, Lars? You know we did have first dibs on the characters. If you really want to play someone, all you have to do is ask. Excuse me, common auditioner. Will you please recite line 43 in chapter 21 of the fanfiction Camper's Pining Hearts as your audition? Lars has nothing to do with this! Congratulations on making it past the audition stage, Resident Claudes. As your reward, I will dutifully announce that we currently have exactly two cents in the funds to create props for this magnificently brilliant play. You, as simple beings, may assume that's a bad thing. However, I, as a superior complex being, acknowledge that this is a time for passion, for self-expression. Release your meat morphs, tiny humans of Beach City, and feel the essence of the props. Ring. Then, 
to life. If you want, you can be in this play. Please get to work on building camp-like props for our play. Otherwise, you can leave. Hmm. Yes, I see. Oh. Hmm. Okay. Oh, yes, yes. These meat morphs. No, these props everyone is creating. Everything is absolutely awful, terrible, pitiful. How could this happen? We gave them one job. One! We can't use any of these props. A giant pair of scissors? Really? What does Percy need with that? This entire thing is a colossal nightmare. I see. I guess this means we have to cancel the whole production. Never. I've got an idea. I'll compile a list of required useful props. If anyone owns any of the items necessary, we can simply use those as our props. Ah, yes. This looks complete. Does anyone perhaps own a chair? What do we do now? Um... No. You know what? We'll prevail. We'll pull off an electric style. It'll be the aesthetic of our play. We'll rely on the heart of the play, not the visuals. Ha! I laugh in the face of props. No one can defeat me! What is the physical plane if I refuse to acknowledge it? Humans don't rule my destiny. Um, uh, d dear Percy, like, well, I mean, do you want to grab a burger? Cut! <sighs> Steven, like I said the last two times, the line is not want to grab a burger. It's what's wrong, Percy. Boo! I'm sorry, Peridot. Please let me try again. I promise I'll get everything right this time. Proceed, Steven. <clears throat> Hey, Percy, my man, do you, do you want to grab a burger? <sighs> Lapis, will you please do the honor of showing Stephen how it's done? Oh, um, I I'm, we should let the musicians practice. After all, the music will be playing throughout the entirety of the play. Ah, yes. Request granted. Phew. Ha! I, Penelope, have won the wheelbarrow race. And now for my prize. Hand over the puka shell necklace you viciously stole from Percy Parker. Cut! First off, Connie, regardless of the fact that we're using a wheelbarrow and trash can, it's still technically a canoe race. Please use your tiny brain's imagination more efficiently. An onion! I implore you not to deviate from the script. That was also our only puka shell necklace. You rang? I'm here to save the day. Doubtful. Trust me, non-believer. Let's restart the scene. Ha! Huh. I, Penelope, have won the wheelbarrow race. And now for my prize. Hand over the puka shell necklace you viciously stole from Percy Parker. Mildly impressive, Amethyst. Nice job, Penelope, dude. You're as cool as your park ranger uniform. Highly impressive, Amethyst. I must admit, maybe you do have it in you to save the day. Boo! This is nothing like the original fanfic. I mean, not that I ever read the fanfic before. Cut! Percy and I used to be best friends. He used to always tell me, Paulette, like, you're like the one. Whatever happened to us? Heartbreak. Percy has drifted from me. Ever since Pierre gave Percy a place to sit on his log. That was the coldest bonfire I've ever experienced. Fear. 
Boo! When shall we spend time together again? Percy, do you really only have time for Pierre? Sadness. Boo! Tell me, when did you two decide that I did not fit into your relationship? Boo! Ugh, I can't work this way! I'm doing my best to complete this job that has been assigned to me, especially since Steven, who's doing great by the way, loves the show this play is based on, but quite honestly, I'm just not sure. And from the looks of it, Percy and Pierre aren't sure either. I'm also not feeling it. Connie? Pearl is right. This play doesn't feel like us, and that's why we're struggling. Maybe we can make this place something that's our own. And if Percy and Pierre are lacking chemistry, maybe we can work with something that they can do. Maybe... Maybe Percy and Pierre confuse. Wait, Connie, fusion is something deep and personal, not a stage trick. Objection! Listen up, Clods. Don't offend me with your pitiful ideas. Percy and Pierre don't need fusion. Their actions alone show the undeniable strength of their relationship. No single action can ever truly defy their partnership. I know fusion's not a stage trick, and that's why I think it'd be great. I'll show our audience just how deep and personal it really is. I just want to make Percy and Pierre strong. You know what else would be cool? If they could jump higher. How cool would that be? That'd be way more interesting. Oh, and Percy should be able to control water, just like Lapis. I think the wheelbarrow and trash can should be just a wheelbarrow and trash can. It'd be much less confusing for the audience. Oh. W well I think Pierre would maybe love hamburgers. I vote to keep my line where I ask Percy out for burgers. Yeah! What about... Can this happen? I think... Donut Butler, what's your take on this nonsense? Huh? What does this have to do with this? <sighs> huh? Attention Clods! I've come to a decision. In regards to the Pierre and Percy fusion, I... I think that... That I... Well, the thing is... Uh... In conclusion, my final decision is... That we can have a little bit of artistic liberty, as long as the message of the story is the same. But... It'll be a fake fusion. Of course, we only have a week to complete this task. So, tomorrow's the big day. Opening day. Yeah, it feels just like yesterday that I made a typing error while searching up Camp Pining Heart's website. Unknowingly clicked on a fan website by accident, saw a fascinating fan art for a fan fiction, investigated said fan fiction, pursued the fan fiction in its entirety, and then ultimately determined to create a play based on it. You know what just feels like yesterday? Steven requesting more line changes. Oh wait, that was just yesterday. <laughs> hey Lapis, are you having fun performing in the play with all of us? Of course. Sometimes I see you having fun, but other times it appears as though you're holding back. Oh, I, I guess I'm just... I'm worried that I'll mess up everything for everyone. What? In the beginning, I wanted everything to be perfect. But the more Steven requested line changes, the more monologues Connie subjected us to about freedom of choice, and as time progressed, I realized that even though it feels really good to follow the rules and do everything right, maybe... maybe... 
Having fun with your friends is the most important part? That sounds convincing. I'm serious. I'm still learning too. I know. Plus, shouldn't we channel the heart and passion that's so successfully embodied in Camp Pining Hearts? What a grave error we'd commit if we didn't at least pretend to live as wildly as our beloved characters. Perhaps this is our true intention into their world. A test from the powers that gave us Percy, Pierre. Stop that. I'm just feeling shy, but I'm having fun. I promise, Peridot. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yes. My next order of business. Hmm? I wanted to, um, ask you about, uh... I wanted to ask about the fake fusion scene you have with Steven. I know it's a fake fusion, but are you okay with it? You don't have to. I'm fine with it. It's just like you said. It's a fake fusion. I mean, we did just discuss having creative liberty. I'm sure Steven and Connie would love to rewrite. It's fine. Okay. Just verifying. I harbor one last order of business. Yes? Please, please, please do your Percy voice! Huh? No, we have the plate tomorrow. You'll hear my Percy voice all day. But it's consistently excellent. And it's imperative that you don't forget it. Give me a practice dialogue. No, stingy. Plus, I could, like, never forget the language of my heart, Paulette. Brilliant! Incredible! Dazzling! You try doing the voice. Okay. Like, perhaps your partnership inspires a positive change within my thought process, Pierre. When did Percy ever say that? What's your favorite part of the play? I guess the fact that we were actually able to pull all of this together. I didn't think it would work out. Ha! <laughs> I had no doubt. I knew we could accomplish it successfully. Really? Affirmative. We make a good team. Yeah. Today's the day, Lapis! Attention, non-paid performance employees! I just wanted to say that- Speech! 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 Speech? Continuing, I wanted to, um, acknowledge the amount of hard work and effort everyone exerted in order to successfully complete this play. I strongly believe we accomplished the task set before us to take an inspiring story and bring it to life by using nothing but our blood, sweat, tears, and objects from home. We started with nothing but our resolve and ended with a play that completely disregards its source work and frankly, has almost become an entirely different story in the end. But hey, it's about the heart, right? The Camp Pining Heart. Ha! <laughs> but I digress, because we accepted our mission and completely took control of it. Of course, it would be near impossible to get as far as we did without my expertise. Am I right? Or am I right? <laughs> anyway, in the words of Percy, it's about, like, the halfway decent acquaintances we made along the way. He never said that. So, in conclusion, I had a lot of fun with you, Claudes. I thank you all. Especially Donut Master, and of course, Donut Butler, who since the beginning... I had absolutely nothing to do with this. Noted. And, um, if I learned anything from Camp Pining Hearts, it's that there's substantial strength in partnerships. So thank you for being my partner in this, Lapis. It, it really was nothing. Go, Peridot and Lapis! Thank you, Steven. All right, places, places. Let's go, non-paid performance employees. We begin our story of friendship and love with the moving tale on when Percy left my grasp. Oh! Hey, Paulette! 
Do you know where Percy is? We're supposed to go out to... Uh... Oh, right! Percy and I are supposed to go out for burgers. No, Pierre. I truly have no idea where Percy is. But I wish he was here. Hmm? But I wish he was here! Hey, don't worry. It's just like Peridot said earlier. It's the heart of the play that matters. We're just here to have fun. Right. It'll be okay. All of us are here to help and support each other, and that includes you. We've been working hard, but mostly having fun. You'll do great. Right. Thank you. Ahem. I'm like totally here, Paulette. Did you call me, or were we like having an emotional connection? I'll save you, Pierre! You... You saved me! Oh, uh... Um... Are you okay? I couldn't just sit around and not do anything. This... This puka shell is so important to you because it's from your necklace. And that puka shell necklace is even more important to you than how important hamburgers are to me. That's saying a lot. I had to save your precious item, Percy. Uh, um, right as I was falling into the lake, I heard Paulette yelling at you not to go out since it's dangerous in this weather. I thought no one would find me out here. But you, you came for me, Pierre. Here you go, Percy. Oh, um, uh... Thank you, Pierre. You're... You're... What is happening? Oh, no. Um... Oh, no. Oh, no! Lapis, are you okay? Lapis! Lapis, I can't do it. I can't do it! I wanted to, but I can't. I know it's a fake fusion. It's not even real. So why am I still so scared? I'm sorry. I knew you were uncomfortable with fusion, and I still approve the scene. It's my fault. I got so carried away with accepting the requests of the entire group that I ignored you. No, you asked me more than once. I told you that I was fine with the scene. I wanted to be okay with it. I wanted to have fun with everyone else. But I was so worried about messing up everyone's fun that I ended up doing exactly that. No, your uncomfortability doesn't ruin our fun. Exactly. And the happiness of the group relies on the individual. If you're happy, we'll all be happy. It's less fun to include something that ruins the fun for someone else. Right, Peridot? Oh, uh, yes. Yes, that is correct. Yeah, but it was a fake fusion. It wasn't even real. It doesn't matter. Real or fake, it's okay to be uncomfortable with something. And if you're uncomfortable, we don't want it. I know it's kind of late, but if I could change the entire play to make you feel better, I would. It's more fun when we both like it. No, I like how everything is. I'm happy. Thank you. You're my favorite friend, Peridot. Percy and Pierre Fusion! <laughs> that was beautiful! <laughs> What's going on? They're doing it for you, Lapis! What? It appears as though everyone else did the fusion scene, so you didn't have to. Ha! 
<laughs> Thank you.